Singapore had, by the mid-80s, become a very successful banking and financial centre. There was still a lack of debt in the capital and financial markets because of the dearth of investment professionals working in Singapore. I was the first and only non-US based uh, student to take the CFA Level 1 uh, at that time. So I had to pay a special fee for them to set up a, a specific exam centre uh, in the University of Singapore then uh, for me to sit for the CFA exam. The staff that was here then um, had no formal training in finance at all. So I said everybody on the equities team has to sit for the CFA. There was only a handful of us doing it. I think probably less than 10 of us. And so when we went to the exam room, we looked at each other. Most of us were actually from GIC. So there were no uh, CFA events. Therefore, it was quite lonely. But then that loneliness was compensated by the higher market value of our resume. Now, I was first approached by Mr. Kobeng Singh, the then President of Monetary Authority of Singapore, to assist in the establishment of an investment uh, analyst society in Singapore and perhaps collaborate with the ICFA and uh, FAF of the United States of America in this project. We conducted the first set of CFA examinations sometime in June 1987. Now the response was overwhelming and we knew there was a very large pool of uh, financial professionals who wanted to acquire the knowledge and discipline of the CFA program. The challenges uh, initially was obviously the drafting of the constitution and also uh, co-opting people to sit on the first council of the Singapore Society of Financial Analysts. I had no hesitation in accepting the invitation because I felt that any measure that would raise the bar of professionalism deserved our encouragement and support. My good memories are subsequent to the, us joining ASEC uh, in 1991 uh, was to conduct and hold the uh, Asian Securities Analyst uh, meeting in Singapore where uh, Dr. Go King Sri, the former economic uh, czar of Singapore was the keynote speaker at this special conference that we held in 1994. Well, at that point of time, after we did this conference, we knew that Singapore would succeed in the development of its efforts in deepening the capital market because the pool of investment professionals was being added on a yearly basis to the asset management and fund management industry. We were all in this for a certain passion, a common shared interest, and a common shared vision. I had a chance to actually work that vision as president of the society. But the biggest challenge at that time was the fact that we were no longer going to get any more secretarial support from the Institute of Banking Finance, which for the last 10 years was given to us on a ex gratia basis. So therefore, one of the first things I had to do was to set up a staffed office ensure that it was run at a reasonable cost that would not burn up our reserves. I undertook to really rejig the composition so that then we had representatives from the buy side, the sell side. We had representatives from academia and including the private wealth area, which was really an area in Singapore that's starting to see growth. I felt that there was a need to have someone from the advocacy scene come on and join the local board. The third area that we actually focused on was having a bench strength of volunteers. Now my vision for the Singapore Society was this, that this would be very much a member-based society. First of all, members are 
able to access professional development courses to uh, have talks where they can uh, listen to experts talk about their different areas, the new developments, and also to have a place where members come together to network. It started with my first attendance at the Singapore Society's AGM and posing an innocent question that what benefits will accrue to a member in Singapore. And I was invited to join the board with like-minded people who are very enthusiastic to um, organize events to bring value and benefit to members. We can divide into four major categories of events. The first uh, is the CFA preparatory course, where we try to enable candidates to have better tools to help them in passing the uh, exams. Uh, next, we have what I call the uh, networking events, where we try to bring both senior members as well as candidates together. Thirdly is the um, uh, university outreach, where we try to bring the CFA program to the universities and through the investment research competition also bring them into reality and uh, contact with professionals in the industry. Uh, last but not least, a career panel event where we try to get senior members to sit in a panel to share their experiences and challenges on the various job roles. So that will give more visibility to the different financial roles that people who aspire to come in the financial industry were able to find some niche of their own. I will remember the uh, warm friendship that I have in the local society, uh, as well as in the uh, institute level, where we work on a volunteer basis in getting a lot of events up and seeing the smiles on the faces of the participants. What was different for us was the board's willingness to take the risk that Singapore's development as a global financial market would support the recruitment of resources to execute on that five-year strategic plan. Two key objectives that we identified based upon feedback from our members. One, continuing education and professional development was key. Our second key objective is to raise awareness of the CFA brand with top employers and other key stakeholders and having the full support of such smart people who have come from such a wealth of experiences and backgrounds is a unique opportunity to explore and develop ambitious plans to really help develop Singapore as a global financial center. I'm deeply honoured and privileged to be associated with the CFA Institute in Singapore. Keep it up, the momentum is right, continue to do what you are doing and congratulations. My wish for CFA Singapore in the future is that we continue to stand as a beacon of integrity and professional excellence. To our founding fathers, we salute you for blazing the way forward for all of us investment professionals. And to our newest CFA charter holders, we welcome you with open arms and we look forward to your future leadership in the next 25 years. Thank you.